Let's do our warm ups today and see where we go from there. Feet hip width apart, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders lined up. Activate your core, so bring your ribs toward your spine and then lift up toward the crown. Bring your shoulders back and down and take a moment just to center over your feet, spread your toes, lengthen your spine and breathe. Exhale any tension, draw our awareness inward and keep it there. And then inhaling, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch those fingertips out. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, shoulders down, and then clasp your hands behind you. Press them to the floor, lift your heart, and stretch your head away. Take a moment there, breathing, opening the heart, in a little back bend, and then pivot over. Head down, move your chin around a little bit. Get the neck released, hands toward your head, spread your toes, lift your sitting bones, and just feel that spine start stretching apart. Bend your knees slightly, push the sitting bones slightly down, and wind from there all the way up, coming into, again, the upper body for your back bend. So lift your heart, drop your shoulders, stretch your head back. Take a moment there in the back bend, feeling that whole spine moving into that back bend stretch. Inhale upright, release your arms, and take a moment feeling your spine getting activated. And again, arms reaching out, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, and clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. So shift one position over with your fingers. Again, lift your heart into the back bend, stretch your head back away, feel the bones opening, and then pivot at your hips, exhale over. And again, deepen as far as you'd like in your forward pivot. Keep that focus on <clears throat> moving at your hips, not necessarily rounding your spine. Lift your sitting bones, feel the legs stretch a little more. Hands toward your head for that shoulder area. And again, chin slightly in, knees slightly bent as you wind from the bottom of the spine into, again, an upper body back bend. Heart high, stretch it away, keep breathing. And on an inhalation, come upright, release your arms, and take a moment feeling what's going on for you today. Side stretches, so bring your arms out, shoulders down, palms up, hands above your shoulders. Clasp your hands, bring your arms next to your ears and straighten everything out. Sitting bones, shoulder blades down, crown high, stretch the spine, lean no twist over to the side, push the foot you're leaning away from down and feel those ribs stretch apart. Sideways motion to your spine, just feel that sideways move. Maximize or minimize, always your choice. And then inhale to the center, switch the other hand in front, bring your arms again next to your ears. Everything's still straight and lean to the other side. And again, make sure you're not leaning forward. You wanna be all straight so those ribs stretch as you push your foot one way and your hands the opposite. And again, after a breath or two there, come back up, keep the shoulders down as you bring your arms out and back into mountain pose. Take a moment feeling those sides a little bit more open and we'll do our twists. So remember, really get that spine stretching apart so the bones have room to move. Hands at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, just clasp your elbows, and again, arms next to your ears. Everything nice and straight as you start. And then as you exhale, hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turn as you look toward the side in your twist. Take a moment there, breathing, and keep the weight on both feet evenly as you come over in your twist forward position. Deepen as far down toward the floor as your head wants to go. Lift your sitting bones, Keep your arms next to your ears, and don't forget to breathe. And then slowly wait on both feet still, toes spread, 
Lift your body back up in the twist and lift your heart toward the ceiling. So remember, no pressure in the low back while you're twisting, coming into your back bend. Stretch those elbows back, chest high, keep breathing. Shoulders down. Inhale to the top, exhale around to the center and switch your arms. And again, sitting bones down, crown high, and turn to the other side, hips, ribs, and shoulders. Take a breath, exhale over. So again, keep the weight on both feet as you come all the way down as far as you want, lifting your sitting bones, feeling that whole back of your body working into the stretch. Take a moment to breathe, and then on an inhalation, come on up. Lift your heart, and again, an upper body back bend, being gentle on your low back. Take a moment to breathe. Inhale to the top, exhale around to the center. Shoulders down, fingertips high, extended mountain. Take a moment there, stretching the crown up and the shoulders and feet down. And then swan dive, so bring your arms to shoulder level, pivot at your hips, chest leading, and come halfway down. Stretch everything out straight, and then drop into ragdoll. You can pull it in deeper with your hands behind your legs, and give it a good stretch on the back. And then hands back to the center, knees slightly bent. And again, wind from the bottom of the spine. See if you can feel those bones just move back into place as you come back up into your mountain pose. As you get there, just take a moment breathing. Shoulders relaxing down and bring your arms to shoulder level. Bend your elbows, fingertips together, and then pull the elbows back, expanding across the heart, and fingertips back together. And then bring the arms forward, out, and around as far back as they want to go. You can touch if you want to, or if you can. And then all the way back. Keep those elbows at shoulder level, fingertips together. A little bit back, just opening the heart. And then working both shoulders all the way around. If they don't go to the back, that's okay. Just go wherever they go, and then rotate back to the center. And release. Just feel those shoulders a little more activated. Maybe circle them a couple of times and breathe. Bring your feet together, bend your knees. Remember, not beyond your toes, just a little gentle bend. Hands above your knees, don't push, just position so your shoulders stay relaxed. And then circle your knees, working those hips just gently so the ankles are getting a little work the knees and the hips, lower body working. And then stop and circle the other way, see how it goes on that side, maybe different. Remember, habitually we use our bodies the same way, so we wanna make sure that we're releasing things evenly. And then back to the center and look out there on the floor in front of you for a balance point, lifting your heels. So come on to the balls of the foot, the base of the toes, but not the toes themselves. Spread those toes out. Feel the support across the front of your foot. And then roll back and forth, working those ankles and arches and toes just a little bit more. And then come on back up into feet hip with a part mountain pose. Take a moment, feeling what was working in that lower body. And let's keep doing that. So either cross your arms behind your lower back or bring your fingertips up for a little more shoulder work between your shoulder blades, reverse prayer position, whichever works for your arms, hands, and shoulders. Knees bent toward, not beyond your toes. And circle your hips. So again, just working out that lower body gently, feeling what's tight, and then going the other way. And notice one side may be different. If you've got bursitis in one hip, that may work differently than the other side. So just be aware. And then coming back to neutral into mountain pose. Take a moment just feeling 
how your body is doing today, and bring your hands to your heart. Shoulders down, looking at your fingers. Inhale toward the ceiling, bringing those thumbs back as you'll gaze at them, lifting your heart, the back bend in the upper back. And then exhale, pivot over, hands to your heart, dropping down. Take a moment there. Slide your hands up under your knees into our halfway up stretch and lengthen everything. And drop back into ragdoll. Knees slightly bent and hands together coming again, following them toward the ceiling. And another back bend. And to your heart, into mountain pose. Step wide. And we'll do pyramid. So, working those upper legs just a little bit. So, you can be as wide apart as you want on this one. Toes start toward the front, but then we're going to turn the feet. So, turn one foot, but not your body, and then turn the other foot back, and then pull that back hip around so you're facing that front foot. And again, either cross your arms behind your lower back, or again, fingertips up between your shoulder blades, hands pressing as much toward each other as they want in reverse prayer. So spread your toes, lengthen up, and then pivoting at that hip joint at the front of your thigh, bring your chest forward, and bring your body parallel to the floor. So keep the chin slightly in, don't push it forward. You don't want to crunch the neck too much. And allow the crown and sitting bones to stretch away from each other. Just get your body as straight as you can into that parallel to the floor position. If you're loving it and you want a little bit more work in your legs, you can lift your sitting bones and keep your body as straight as you can, bringing your body all the way toward your leg if it goes there. That'll be a little bit intense on the back of your front leg, so make sure your kneecap is going toward your thigh and tightening the front of your thigh so those hamstrings can stretch more readily. The back hip keeps pulling forward, the front hip keeps pulling back so that you're nice and perpendicular in those hips to the floor. Take a breath, stretch it out. If you went further than parallel to the floor, come on back up making your body parallel, stretching it out, sitting bones and crown away from each other. And then lead with your head back up, releasing your arms, turning the feet back to the front. Take a moment, feel what's moving and energized in your body. And of course, we're going to balance and do that same thing to the other side. So again, sink evenly into your feet, spreading your toes, sitting bones down, and we'll move the feet first. So turn your foot, heel back, toes forward, and then bring this back hip all the way around and the front hip back, so you're facing that front, front foot. Legs stay straight, both of them, throughout this practice. So knee forward up toward your thigh, tightening the thigh so that the hamstring can stretch nicely. Clasp your hands either at your low back or between your shoulder blades. And again, pivot at the hips. So you're pulling the front hip back and the back hip up as you're pivoting forward parallel to the floor. Keep the spine as straight as you can. Remember, don't push your chin forward. You don't want to crunch those neck bones together. You want to keep looking down toward that front foot. Spread the toes. Push the sitting bone on that front leg back and the other one coming up so the hips stay parallel as you're in that position. And if you love it, you can go further, pivoting at that hip joint, stretching your spine. You can bring your body all the way toward that front leg if that works for you. But remember, keep the spine straight while you're doing it. Take a moment to breathe, going as far as you like. Keep the weight on the ball of the big toe as well as the outside of the foot on that front foot and the back foot. Take a moment and breathe, pushing a little bit more maybe into that little toe side of the back leg. And then pivot back up, releasing your hands, turning your feet to the front, coming into your wide leg position. And let's stay there, spreading your toes, bring those thumbs to your hip crease, and pivot forward. 
with those legs just straight. So again, come parallel to the floor as much as your body likes. Stretch the sitting bones back and the crown forward. And then you can slide your hands down to your ankles, or you can bring the hands under your shoulders to the floor. We'll do a twist. So spread out your toes, get the weight into the heels and balls of the feet at the same time, and stretch the sitting bones and crown away. We're keeping the right hand either on the floor or the foot and bringing the other one out and follow it around, looking toward the ceiling as much as you can, turning your hips, ribs, and shoulder toward the side. So remember, you're not just turning your head and overstraining your neck. You're moving your whole body, your whole spine, looking toward the side as you go into the twist. So go as deeply as you like. If you love a twist, you can bring your hand to the opposite side and pull the hand in the air further behind you. Again, still moving the whole spine, hips and ribs and shoulder going deeper into your twist. And then if you went further, bring the hand back to the center and follow the hand in the air back down, either to your leg or the floor under your shoulder. And again, stretch the spine apart, just feel all that twist energy. Spread your toes, sink into your heels and balls of your feet evenly. And keep the left hand or the opposite hand on the foot, leg, or floor. Other arm out to the side. And again, follow it around into the twist, hips, ribs, and shoulder turning slightly toward the side. And again, maximize your twist however far your body wants to go, either straight up or going further with the hands, moving even deeper into the twist with your whole spine turning, remember, not just your head. Take a moment and breathe, stretching it out. If you went further than straight up and down, return there. And then exhale back to the floor or your way. And again, stretch that spine apart. Bring your hands to your ankles if they are shins, if they aren't. And slide back up, pivoting into your wide leg position. And then step into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get back there, noticing everything that's been activated, all that circulation going through your torso, your legs, wherever, maybe your shoulders, and bring your hands to your heart. Shoulders are down, fingertips together, and raise your hands again. Follow it to the back bend, looking at your thumbs, lifting your heart as much as you like for the back bend, and then swan dive. Let's bring the whole body forward and come to parallel to the floor, and then drop and drag down. Hands up with those hands under your knees on your shins for our halfway up stretch. Everything again straight, shoulder, shoulder blades, sitting bones back, crown forward, stretch that spine apart, bend your knees, exhaling, and transition to the floor into child pose. Hips back toward your heels, hands, palms up, or head toward the floor. Remember, you can pad if you need to for your knees or legs and just relax your shoulders fully. Knees together for a little extra low back stretch for those of you who love that. And don't forget to breathe. Just relaxing. And then inhaling, sit up and let's come into staff position. Press out through your heels, pull your toes back, feel your body, and raise your crown toward the ceiling. And let's keep going with our wide leg position. So go ahead and bring your feet out toward the sides as far as they want to go, just naturally. Feel the stretch, just let it relax. Press out through your heels, pull the toes back. Sitting bones behind you nicely. Remember, you can put a little padding there if you need to to give you a little more opening in the hips. So take a moment and feel that stretch through your legs. Crown toward the ceiling, shoulders relaxing down. Activate your core, ribs toward your spine and up. Take a moment there, just feeling your body, exhaling any tension. Hands to your sides. Bring your arms out, 
palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Keep the shoulders, shoulder blades where? Toward your waist. So stretch out through your fingertips and your head, and then exhale, bring your hands down to your shoulders, sink into your sitting bones, and then stretch up again. So raise those hands and head, keep the shoulders bow down, exhale, sink. And then as you inhale this time, give yourself a really good stretch, pivot at that hip joint, keep your arms by your ears, and pivot forward, keeping your spine straight. Push the sitting bones behind you, and you can either bring your hands to the floor or your feet, whichever is more comfortable for your shoulders. So if you're really flexible, you can bring your chest all the way down. That's okay, do what you want. But remember, be relaxing through this inner thigh area. So knees toward your thighs and thighs tightening slightly. And just keep pivoting as you relax through that inner thigh particularly and let your body come as far toward the floor as it wants to go. It may never make it, that's perfectly fine. And then bring your arms back next to your ears, shoulder, shoulder blades toward your waist, body straight as you pivot back up. Exhale, hands out to the sides and back down. Bend your knees and bring the bottoms of your feet together in the butterfly. So again, stretching through that inner thigh a little bit. Hands clasped under your toes, pull those heels in as far as they want to go. Knees coming down toward the floor, crown reaching up, nice openness through the chest, through the heart, as well as letting those legs just relax, knees going down toward the floor. And then one at a time, bring your hands behind you right under your shoulders, either fingertips or palms, whatever works for your arms. Take a moment, lift your heart, stretch the head up, and a little pressure in your hands. And as you do, kind of rotate the bottoms of your feet toward the ceiling more. And that may allow those knees to come even further out to the sides toward the floor. Let it happen if it does. Otherwise, just relax wherever you are. Remember, personal practice, your body knows how far it should go without overdoing. Take a breath. Exhale, release any tension. And then bringing your hands back to the center on your ankles. Slide your feet out just slightly. Bring your hands under your legs. Pivot forward at your hips again. Keep your spine straight, hands on the tops of your feet, and just bring your chest down toward your feet. So the knees are going out toward the sides, and you can rotate the feet toward the ceiling maybe a little bit more if that helps those knees stay lined up better for that openness to the sides movement. Keep the spine straight so you're pivoting at that hip joint, but the crown is reaching away from the sitting bones. And you're bringing your chest toward your feet as much as they want to go. Relax through that inner thigh area. Keep breathing. And then head reaching out. Inhale. Bring your head back up, releasing your hands. Lift your knees. Bring your feet out to the front and to the end of the mat. Into staff position. Activate that core. Shoulders above your hips. And then rounding slightly through that lower back, bring the lower back to the floor, and then your bottom ribs, and then your shoulder blades, and finally your shoulders, and your head, and your whole body onto the floor. Feel that core, just let it release any tension. And bring your arms out to the sides, T position, palms up for our twist. Sitting bones slightly toward your heels, and either bend your knee, or keep the legs straight, bring your right foot to the ceiling and flex the heel. Keep it as straight as you can, as straight up as you can. We're rolling all the way to the left side for our twist. So head stays on the floor. Remember, don't overwork your neck. Hands coming together on the floor in front of you and the foot all the way to the floor. You can hold your foot with your left hand if that works for you, or hold your leg with your left hand and bring your right hand above your shoulder to the ceiling. Open palm, hand right at shoulder level, lower it behind you toward the floor. It may not make it, that's okay. Just go as far as gravity wants to bring your middle back into the twist, letting that shoulder come toward the floor, hand toward the floor as much as it wants. 
If you turn your neck and turn looking toward that hand, you're working that neck area of your spine. Don't go there if that's an issue. And the more you hold your foot and press that foot away, the more that lower back will be activated in your twist. So again, be gentle if you need to. Take a breath. Just exhale the ligaments releasing and your body relaxing into its twist. Never force your twist. Just go as far as your body needs. Your hand may stay in the air. That's okay. Let gravity do the work. Don't force it. And when you're ready to release your twist, of course, you can hold it on your own a longer. But for now, we need to roll onto our back, bringing the foot back up and activating the core to lower the leg back to the floor. And of course, we have to balance the body and twist to the other side. So hands still, palms up at shoulder level, feet hip width apart, sitting bones toward the heel slightly, and left leg up, either bend it or keep it straight, your choice. Press the foot to the ceiling, heel toes toward your head, heel toward the ceiling, head on the floor as you roll to the right side, and bring the foot all the way across to the floor. Hold the foot if that works, or just your leg. And the left hand right above your shoulder. Remember, not down toward your foot or up toward your head, but straight back, back of your hand going toward the floor, palm up toward the ceiling. Turn your head as much as it wants to for your neck area twist. And again, hold the foot and push it away if you love that low back getting more activated in your twist. And the more the hand goes toward the floor, the more that shoulder goes toward the floor, the more your middle back twists. So be gentle, just like gravity, do that work for you. Take a breath, really relaxing. Just let those ligaments release, let the spine relax, and let your body do its twist on its own. Let the tension go. And of course, when you're ready to release, roll onto your back, flex the foot, and press the back gently down as you slowly lower the leg using your core for support. When it gets all the way down, it's relaxation time. So just bring your body into corpse position for our relaxation today. Palms up near your sides, slightly away. Shoulders down, feel those shoulder blades sink. And that chest open a little bit more. Bring your toes together and then just let your legs relax. Move your head side to side. Let that neck area release a little bit more as well. Exhale, softening your whole body, letting it sink into that surface beneath you. And just let your body go completely, relaxing any tightness in the legs or the hips or the torso or the shoulders. Just let everything release deep into that earth support. And as your body relaxes, just release thoughts of your body from your mind. Just let it relax on its own. And as those thoughts of your body release, know that other thoughts will come to your mind. It's the job of your mind to produce thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. Just let the thoughts drift as easily as your breath without attention. And as the thoughts float away, allow your awareness to release the content of any thoughts. Letting go of the past, forgetting the future, just thoughts flowing away without attention. Let your awareness release your body and your mind. And let that awareness turn inward to the peace within. Feel your body, feel your mind, feel your being only with peace. Take a few moments and be peace.
And with that relaxation feels especially good today. Just stay relaxed as long as you can. If so, it's time to get ready for the rest of your day. Just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, draw your heels toward your hips, and your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, <clears throat> however feels good for your appreciative yoga hug, letting your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, head and feet to the floor, roll over to the side, sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.